everyone. I am Nutrix of uh, Scent Guy. Today we're talking about the firmware update 2.5 of the Novation Base Station 2. There's always something really nice from companies where they actually support their gear and products for a long run. And the Base Station 2 is not a new product, but they've kept having updates for that. Innovation is one of these companies who actually give us more as we go along with them because they keep adding features to their hardware synth. Uh, I have a circuit and the circuit add different updates to a point that now it's totally, you know, a lot more powerful than the original version that came out. And the same thing goes for the Base Station 2 with the version 2.5. Historically, the, the Base Station 1 came out in the 90s or something. And they were um, basically trying to recreate the sound of the TV303. Um, it's not exactly the same sound, of course, but it's a cool bass sound. And today, for the price, it's one of the powerful synthesizer that is an affordable one, which is a normal size synthesizer. I mean, normal size keys. Of course, it's a small keyboard, uh, but all the features you have it sounds really cool. The option they made are really fun and it makes it for a very powerful synthesizer. Now, they added new features with the version 2.5. I'll do two videos about it. The first one will be how to actually update the firmware. I'm just gonna show you that. And the second one will be, I'll go through all the different new features. And rapidly, they have paraphonic mode. If you don't know what paraphonic mode is, actually there's a link over there to a video I made on explaining what a paraphonic synthesizer is. And it was part of their uh, circuit mono station, which is a base station in a circuit box. And that one was paraphonic. So after they came out with that, a lot of people say, well, do the same thing for this one. So how paraphonic mode can be cool for that? I'll talk about that later on. There's a filter tracking, there's envelope re-triggering, also becomes some type of a little LFO shape, or it could also be seen as a, some type of little sequence if you want. Oscillator error, so you can create that instability uh, that you have in older synthesizers. Microtuning, if, the, if that's what you need. The, you can also have on the screen a customized uh, text appear. Right now, we'll look at how to upgrade the firmware of the base station 2. Let's do that. First thing you need to do is have a USB cable connected from the back of the base station 2 into your computer and then you open up the software called components and go well components are online only. No. Components is an online software that runs from their website but if you register your hardware you can download components on your hard disk locally and run it from the computer. And just turn on the machine. When you turn on components, the first time when it's not updated, it's gonna have a little option saying update available. You click on it and it will update the app called component, components. And then you have the list of everything that they have. I have a circuit, but in this case, it's not connected. I've got the base station two. Click on base station two and say, oh, okay. Uh, now the component supports base station two. That's new, and there's gonna be a tutorial about that. Next, blah, blah, blah. You know, 128 base station patch. Okay, cool. Uh, here's your patch where you're gonna have them with the banks. Okay, here's the sound. Okay, basically um, a librarian if you wanna use it. And uh, plug in base station two, it will connect automatically. Yes, it is connected. That's why I see the green part here connected. Save to component cloud. I can save it online. Save to cloud, blah, blah, blah. Save bank to the base station two and uh, well, okay, that's it, more information, done. So I have it connected here. I've got a new bank open, then get bank. Let's say I go get bank, do I have something here? I have the name even of the bank, that's really cool. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do now, but I wanna go to firmware. You have it at the top here, click on firmware and I'm gonna update and they tell you what these are and want. So let's actually go and update. So you just basically wait. And what I'm doing right now with the component screen uh, on the local version would be the same if I would be online running off their website. It's the same thing. So then I'm just waiting. It's going to reboot, reboots, update the tuning table, sends the information, and then success. We'll dismiss. And it is, voila, 
it's updated. Now, <laughs> it's very simple. If this doesn't work, then you have a problem. But uh, no, that's it. Any other information? Normal mode seems to be fine. Okay, so this is how you actually upgrade the firmware. Next video, what are the new features and how to actually use them? So watch the next video about that. Cheers.